flag. Let's just prove that I do care. Uh, but let's start. Go on. Thank you, Camilo. And I am uh, in charge of uh, the Swiss part of the project. Camilo Pellizzari is in charge of the, of the Italian one, but we work together, so we exchange a lot of information on the side. That's why we have this peculiar comparison that we will see in, the, in these uh, current slides. So the first one is an overview for the concept. For those of you uh, who have uh, no, no um, general guidelines about the situations, um, we are talking about authors. So you might have heard about the Wikisite project, which is about scholarly article, and therefore authors as part of scholarly article. But in this case, the entire project only focus, mainly focus on authors as the main important aspect. And authors are, uh, the items of authors are in fact at the, at the crossroad of two different areas. One is the general bibliometry, so authors of articles, and the other one are in fact the authority control and, uh, of uh, library and mostly national libraries, you know, the VF ecosystem and all the other related identifiers. So Wikidata is right in the middle because it perfectly, when, when, when it produces items of authors, it can function in both sector. And when we actually discuss the, the situations that we have, uh, you have to imagine that there are the items of article and the, other, uh, the items of authors. And uh, you have, uh, on, on the top part of the graph, you have the core information, which are... Uh, in the case of articles, the title, the journal, the volume, and in the case of authors, the name and surname as a string. Uh, so imagine these are the information that you can extract while you have your PDF of your article in your hand, basically. Then, then there is the second part, which is the one where you actually add more valuable information that gives nuance to your metadata and go deeper in analyzing the, uh, the, 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 um, the situations, which could be in some additional identifiers uh, besides the, of, uh, the DOI, which is the most common one, but also the, for, uh, for authors, the entire academic career, the information about the thesis, the thesis supervisors, and so on. Uh, big automatic and semi-automatic import are more designed to take care of the first part of the graph, which is what has been going on in the last years. Now we're currently in a phase where man manual refinement in the lower part of the graph is getting more and more uh, important. Now, uh, our project were in fact added under the Wikisite umbrella because we had no problems doing so. It was actually more functional to provide a unique brand of all the bibliometry on activities related to bibliometry on Wikidata. Even we were not related to the beginning of the Wikisite project. So uh, the Wikisite project in the beginning was a lot of massive import. And so these were from database like uh, ORCID and PubMed. So it was a lot of import that put you in the lower part of the graph. So scholarly article with author strings and so on. Our projects in Italy and Switzerland are in fact in the, uh, they, they move down because they start to insert much more information. And these projects that you see are in, in uh, yellow, the one related to Italy, and in orange, you will see in the slide, the one related to Switzerland. Please. So. So I speak uh, about Italy. Of course, all of this is ongoing work. And uh, let's start with uh, this project. The main project uh, in Italy about authors is, of course, the IRIS project. And uh, this is the page on Wikidata. In order to see how, what is IRIS, uh, we have to know something about Italian universities. So Italian universities are united in a consortium that's called Cineca. Cineca has developed uh, a software to um, have so that the universities can have their institutional repositories uh, all with the same uh, features. The, so all the universities in Italy basically use IRIS as the software for their institutional repositories. And this makes the situation somehow easier to manage because uh, basically if you program, for example, a scraper of uh, one of these repositories, then you can just adjust a few things and you can scrape all the others. So uh, we call the project IRIS for that reason. And uh, our aim was to use IRIS repositories to gain a full overview of the researchers active in Italian universities, which is something that in Italy you don't have because each university has its repository. And as you can see on this map, they are more than 80. Others are still uh, being created now. Probably there are more than 90, in fact. And uh, 
in Italy there should be a unique repository for the research, but although a law established it about 15 years ago, it has never been created, and so we are just trying to do it for, um, for, uh, yeah, for the state um, and uh, uh, to help it if eventually it will be created. So what we did was first creating the items on Wikidata for each repository, then creating the property for each uh, of the author pages in these repositories, and we added the identifiers of the authors uh, to the Wikidata items of them, so that if a, an author is represented in multiple of these repositories, because, for example, he changed the university during time, all of these will be connected to Wikidata items. Or, of course, this is basically all manual work, so it is taking a lot of time also because just a few volunteers are doing it, uh, just two universities have pay, paid someone for a few months to uh, have the work proceed more uh, quickly, but in most cases it's just uh, manual work. So uh, for the social campaign, I leave the word to Alessandro. So yes, one of the peculiar aspects of the Italian project is that it was associated with a very dedicated social media campaign. We have community channel about Wikidata, so we prepare a precise graphics that every month up, up, updated the public about the advancement of the project and also tagged the different institutions, which also gave us a little bit of feedback about the reactivity. There is also the second part of a social media campaign, which when Action University is completed, which of course we cannot put here because it's lack of time. There's only three of them so far, if I remember. But in any case, the, the campaign is ready and set up. So as you can see, it was really a very structured situation. And another test that we did was uh, for the university press. So this is another test. Remember that you will see at the end of, this, of the talk, but this is a country level initiative. So that means one of the things that we can do in a country is to see if there are published journals that are published in that country or owned by publisher in that country. In this case, for example, the University of Florence has its university press and published two journals. And this is one of the cases where we actually not only took care of the authors, which could be also international, but many of them statistically are also related to Italy, but also the information of the article, just to prove that we care about the article. Actually, we did a great work there about keywords and metadata to define the concept inside the article that were missing and that have been heavily used later. Unfortunately, this is a very compressed talk, but and we cannot deep too much in details. We have now to switch to the part about Switzerland. I hope you understand that you are seeing many different cases all together, all packed, just to show you how these two years have been very dense. In Switzerland, I was mostly in charge. I made uh, another research. Actually, this is just the part about researchers. There are other aspects of the project, but this aspect about researcher was very intense, and we basically starting in 2021, November, that's the month of Wikiscience competition, because the entire project was in this case a spin-off of the photo competition, which might sound strange, but the photo competition requires to send thousands of emails to researchers to be informed about the competition, which basically created an archive of contact of the researcher. We basically started to recycle that archive to double check if all those researchers were already on Wikidata. It's a strange way to start, very different from Italy, but again, in details it would be much fun. And here you can see that if you try to get a metric, so it's if you look at all the people that are employed by a company, the, whose nationality is actually the, of the company stated, and you calculate how many of them are employed by a Swiss one, which is a rough indicator, you could see that over time this percentage starts to rise. So in the first two years it was mostly set up, then we arrived to 2023 when the project in Switzerland is finally approved as funding, there was mostly like test, and that you start, the graph starts climbing up, because now thousands of researchers are being in, inserted inside Wikidata. Now, the, the Swiss uh, system basically is very different from the Italian one. Forget to have a lot of IDs. What you have is few sparse ID. One national one is the one in white is the National Science Foundation. So actually there is an ID for grants, which is something that Italy does not have. Uh, and that covers a lot of research and it would be, take a lot of time to integrate on Wikidata. And then there are very tiny, small local IDs, which are much more easy to handle and we're handling one by one. Plus, we have now maybe a first attempt to work with a university, which means a university doesn't have an ID, but wants to know more and have the data on Wikidata and see if that maybe might help to structure their ID. So as you can see, while in Italy you have 
a lot of fragmented ID and Wikidata might help unify them. In Switzerland, sometimes you don't have even IDs. You have a very uh, different fragmented canton situation. So Wikidata might help to raise the issues of the quality, which is in Switzerland is a little bit lower compared to other countries, despite the huge amount of money and financing that they have. So, sorry if everything is a little bit compressed. Now, you have seen for approximately a couple, uh, 12 minutes or something, you basically have seen a lot of different examples. Why we show this example and where does it pour down? In this slide, we want to stress the fact that working in Italy and Switzerland together on situations that were at the same time similar and different made us realize that probably the models that we are trying to uh, standardize are pro are, can probably be adapted to other countries. We already know from preliminary discussion for people working in other countries. That means that uh, that's why maybe we can export them. Could you please go to the next slide? Basically, it means that we know that the national dimension is a very crucial factor. So far, most of the import that we had about researchers on Wikidata are related either to big transnational database or there are very nice field initiatives. So people that basically in a certain sector are improving the metadata for that sector for specific use. It's perfectly fine. But if you think about it, the great impact in the science is done by policy, and most of the policy are national, both in terms of funding and in terms of career. That means the process where people can get academic title. So we wanted to be sure to test if we can create an ecosystem that is compatible with country-level initiatives. That means if another country wants to do so, and share our expertise so they can do so, because in our opinion, that's where you can get to the bureaucrat in charge and if you can change their mind or you can make them more flexible, showing you can do things, they might trickle down this to the research sector as a whole in that specific country. Because again, they handle the money, which is something researchers care a lot. It might work partially, it depends on the country, but it's something that can be done. And basically, the entire comparison of Italy and Switzerland, which we're not going to see here in its many different aspects, is something that if you take another random country, you will see the certain aspect might apply to one country or another. So if you want to work on this sort of project in a multilingual country, certain aspect of Switzerland that is convincing the national level, the Wikidata as a multilingual platform is in fact more flexible than when it kick in. In the case of Italy, it could be the, basically the lack of resources, the fact that the system is completely underfunded, so having free data already available might be a plus. When in Switzerland, there are no problem sometimes to pay people to do things from scratch. So what we have basically learned is that country, from the point of the metadata of research, and in this case, the metadata of author, as we started from that point first, is uh, basically uh, influenced by four different types of activities. And in Italy and Switzerland, we saw three of them, when in other countries, sometimes there is a fourth one, which is a little bit stronger. Basically, either you can start to import local journals, of which the, in the academic sector in that country is particularly proud about, because they hand an international peer review journal, but it's published there, so outside of a big conglomerate. That's one thing that usually might work. It did in Italy, we might try it also in Switzerland. We have some target, we just haven't been there yet. So in this case, we tested it more with Italy. Uh, it can be the import of a repository as a whole, either just the authors or the authors and the articles. In this case, in Italy, we made a project that is mostly about almost every author with the Iris, while in Switzerland, we have to target specific, specific local repositories. So we will just want go to a university and, and tell them, you have this repository, this repository is very well done, so we can make it integrated directly with Wikidata, or your repository is very basic, we can give you the Wikidata metadata to improve it uh, with a lower cost so that you actually pay someone to do something else, not just gather the data, for example. These sort of things, so local repository. The third access is <clears throat> what is called prosopography of uh, researchers. This is a term that I usually switch to Camilo because he's the one that introduces in this context. Yeah, so uh, the idea that uh, you can use Wikidata to have a complete overview of the researcher active in a certain context uh, because often there are multiple databases that uh, are more or less complete and uh, the optimal thing would be having a database that is all comprehensive and so we can do it basically putting all of them on Wikidata, combining different databases also from different areas, from bibliometry, from libraries and so on. And 
from the practical point of view, this is particularly useful for very small countries. What we're trying to say with this point is that if you're a very small country and you already have a national database for your library, there is no point to duplicate this also with an archive of researchers, as usually happens in big countries when they do exist, or an archive for thesis. That means you probably just simply take the, ar the archive that already exists and you expand this function which is, for example, what could be in the case of the small country of Liechtenstein, where we contacted both the National University and the National Library. So we tell them that Wikidata exists, but we expect mostly that in small country, uh, the government is not very big, so the Department of Culture Instruction is usually the same places and the same bureaucrats, so we don't expect... Of course, they are missing stuff because they are small, so there's not their priority, but if they want to introduce, we think it would be very strange just again, doing everything twice, so it's possible that we can convince about them. This is another possibility. And then, of course, the thesis, which is the last point, which we never cross, but in some countries there are thesis repositories that are really well done, again, because a thesis is a public uh, title, which has to be perfectly standardized by law and so on, so sometimes the requirement uh, lead to very structured database. That's also a possibility, and you will find this possibility in other countries, not in, in, our, in our case. Now, the final slide is the most heavy one. And so basically, if this were a 40 minutes talk, all of these points would be another slide mm -hmm. that will show you something else on Wikidata. But for those of you who are experts of Wikidata, that's what we might discuss in practice after the talk. For those of you who are not experts of Wikidata, basically the point is as follows. We see when we import things that there are a lot of things that are missing at the level of a general culture, at the level of defined guidelines, uh, at, at, at agreement about how things should be done properly. And we're perfectly aware that every new country entering the field, every new country wants to start a country level initiatives, according to these four axes, whatever is the one they prefer to start with, will have to face this scenario. And we wanted to prepare them in a way they don't, they don't start from zero. So at a certain point, I decided to allocate part of the time that we could do just to keep importing things, most to defining policy and coordination pages. That's what we're doing for everyone. So, for example, one thing that you can probably get, sometimes the Wikidata items have model pages. So there are pages where it's a little bit more discussed how a good item should be. So we have finally structured the navigation template of those pages, recategorized them, and we have created uh, pages for researchers, which is still under officially a draft because they didn't want it to overdo it. But the point is that we are starting to create that. So we can link that in the future. And there are already a lot of things that are much more explained. And inside these pages, uh, of course, they rely on maybe other guidelines. So there are aspects of redundancy or even conflict of uh, categorization of information. And we have opened all these discussions. Here you cite two of them, which are marked with a clock, which means we are ongoing. One is the very peculiar discussions, but very technical about how to encode the affiliation and the employer. There was a general lack of culture on the topic where people assume sometimes that they were basically the same things. They are not, they're very different, they have to be very careful, and there are cases like, for example, PhD students where confusions can actually lead to encode wrong information. Mm -hmm. So there were people saying the students were employed by university. They aren't. So you're literally encoding a false information in some country. That's what they say. In some country they are, in some country they are, in some countries they aren't. But people start from a country and assume it's like that everywhere. And that created literally false statement about personal living people, which is something we really want to avoid. That's why we started these discussions. What else? Uh, website, because none of the information comes from website. There are lab websites, there are personal websites, there are academic pages. All of these is actually defining the ontology of Wikidata, but we only have one property, and everybody's stuffing the properties there, and this is getting pretty much uh, confusing, and this has to be adapted because most of the information comes from websites, so this is definitely something that has to be defined. So these are the sort of things we wanted to define. There are also other points. Uh, one big one, before we start the discussions, are the homonyms. And this is something that really required not even once but two or three slides. Basically, we know that when you make an item of a researcher with a name and a surname, you can just leave it there if it has a lot of people who are called the same way because this will create in the future confession. So what we had to do is to start to list all the possible homonyms to revise in the futures and we start to ask the discussions to create a proper homonyms project on Wikidata so that undermanned project that don't have time to take care of that, like we 
did more or less properly in Italy, for example, can actually at least list these names to these projects so people will know they are critical in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about very common combination. There are a lot of names that are very common in any case. And that's if you have to be sure to cover the homonyms to be sure that you don't get com confusions, which doubles down enormously the work. Plus, of course, when you have homonyms and so on, you find mistakes in external archive. So we had to redefine the entire data around TripPick pages on Wikidata to, the, to list all the users that actually work in external database. So for example, when you tr find a gender mistakes, you not only make the Wikidata item properly, but you can also contact the German user that has access to the GND to correct it directly. This way, we try to reduce as much as possible the propagation of mistakes. And this leads to the end of this talk with our conclusion. And usually I ask him to do because I started. Yeah. So, um, in fact, we have seen that Wikidata has an, an expanding role in uh, storing bibliometric metadata. Of course, uh, um, as you know, the Wikisite project has been slowed down to issues of the size of Wikidata, possible collapse of the query service, and so on. But we hope that these are being mitigated. And uh, as we saw also in the previous days with uh, the talk about the query service, uh, uh, we hope that in a few months we will have a at least more stable situation. Uh, and so we hope anyway that this work continues, especially as we saw this, um, this PowerPoint, this presentation was mainly about authors. Uh, as we saw, uh, working at the country level is important in order also to co involve stakeholders that can uh, um, foster our uh, work on this uh, data. And uh, we have the know-how to catalyze these processes, as we say said, and uh, there are the Wikidata pages of our projects. So we have also tried to standardize, better interconnect the existing pages of the Wiki projects and so on. As we know, it's sometimes difficult to find all the know-how that is stored in different Wikidata pages in different points of Wikidata, and we are trying to make this easier. And finally, of course, we hope that uh, having more data, especially on researchers, can also help us extend our research uh, uh, beyond bibliometrics. For example, if we have better data about researchers, we can make sociological studies about, uh, for example, the age or the division uh, by gender and so on uh, of researchers in universities that as of now is difficult. And which is something probably some bureaucrats might be interested. So that's something we usually point out. And so uh, for this reason, we hope that uh, we can still continue improving this data and that our efforts in Italy and in Switzerland can be useful also for other countries. And of course, we remain available for discussion and so on. And we also find us on Wikidata. Thank Sorry, you. We don't have a lot of time for questions, but it was really a very dense presentation. <laughs> so just contact us in any case. Who yeah. has a question in any case? Maybe one. <laughs> one, we have time. Yep. Go on. Are you planning on doing extra thesis work as your next step? Thesis. Thesis, yeah. Um, uh, two. Uh, we actually didn't find a lot of information about thesis. So uh, the theme in Italy and Switzerland cannot be addressed very well. Uh, but if we contact uh, universities, mm. and this is something we can ask, and we will. So, for example, in one university, in fact, we are importing data, and we are already deciding how to do about what is the information about thesis graduate and what is the information about professors. This is, this is something that has emerged when you talk to universities. If you want to talk to someone who knows, who's an expert, probably the world's expert, yeah. Wikidata expert, I would... Tamsin, editor Dr. Thneed, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Then you're on top. Uh, I, I, I can add that in Italy, in theory, a new repository for all PhD theses should be created this year. And so when it will be online, uh, we will see if there is something possi possibly to be done. Yeah. Thank you. But yes, New Zealand is an example of a country where basically some similar process has emerged. Because but it, 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 from, the, from them, it mostly started from thesis. It starts from different areas in every country. You, you never know. Okay. Uh, but we still, I don't know if the five minutes of buffer, if someone has another question, but you can come and ask us. We're here. Okay. Thank you.